Welcome to week number 45 of 2022. I'm Susie and we are here with Crypto Mastery Classes with Joe, who created the Crypto Mastery Indicators. So we're going to make crypto easy to understand, simple to invest in, look at the news, overall market, some hot movers in the basket, the indicators, and some question and answer. Right now, will Ripple win the battle? Just a quick disclaimer, the opinion expressed here is not investment advice. I am not a financial advisor. So brace yourself as Ripple price rally as Ripple nears victory against the SEC. Written by Delma on coinpedia.org. By November 18th, 2022, Ripple community expects a judgment on the SEC and Ripple's petitions for summary judgment to be available. However, Given the circumstances, they predict it might take much longer. The Ripple lawsuit advisor, John Deaton, lists some important court dates. Response summaries are expected on November 15, 2022, according to Deaton. A seal will be applied to the response before it is sent. By November 21st, the censored public copies will be made available. So keep those two dates in mind. As the SEC Ripple Court battle nears its conclusion, the XRP coin is gaining traction and investors are ready for a bullish trend. Because of this, the Ripple USD pair is currently trading on the daily chart with reasonable support close to 44 cents and support from an upward trend line. Furthermore, the 50 day moving average helps Ripple maintain its price above 45 cents. So here's another article about Ripple. Cryptos aren't securities. Ripple and the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. This is by John Miller on Seeking Alpha. A positive ruling or settlement would likely allow Ripple to be relisted on the digital asset marketplace like Coinbase, increasing demand. Note that this week Coinbase has also officially proposed an amicus brief, which it has prepared and provided to the court. As an aside, the outcome of the case has direct bearing on Coinbase's business and their larger proposal for a new regulatory regime specifically designed for digital assets. In any case, the year's long battle is coming to a close. Both sides have filed and responded to briefs asking for summary judgment in their favor. Considering the timing opinions from the media and Ripple representatives, the lawsuit resolution likely comes in the first quarter of next year. This makes the coming months a prime accumulation period for Ripple from a fundamental standpoint. John Miller is giving an initial buy rating on Ripple based on the, lit the litigation upside. And then I wanted to give you one more article. So we had three to look at. Crypto law experts suggest that SEC likely to lose key case in discrete how we test by Rosalind Layton on Forbes.com, and this was on October 30th, 2022. As a cryptocurrency trial of the century draws to a close in Manhattan federal court, there are increasing signs that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, faces a bruising defeat against the San Francisco-based enterprise blockchain innovator Ripple Labs. The verdict could drastically limit the SEC's authority to regulate crypto in the United States. If that's how it ends, it will have been a self-inflicted disaster from the start. So just in from Brett, he said that there is a lot of articles right now hitting the market, the news. So you may want to look this up yourself. That FTX has paused withdrawals and that LBRY has lost to the SEC on claims of it being a security. So it's causing a meltdown in the market. So I would definitely do your own research on this because prior to getting this news, I had done the research on the Ripple claims. So check it out, but let's look at that market. But before that, let's look at Ripple. So here's Ripple USD one month performance with the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And so you can see on a one month basis that early reversal came in three months ago. You can see that the trend has not triggered yet. And the trend strength indicator is showing up for two months. The signal line, though, is still downward. So we've got some absolute, there's, there's some tension here. It's not a full-fledged move ahead. And the volatility index is at a really great oversold zone at 19. So that is Ripple right now.
And now let's look at the overall market cap. Hey, Susie, so I can it'll... chime in real quick if you like. Uh, oh, yeah, this is... did, Brad. <laughs> yeah, this is breaking news, guys. And so, uh, Susie, we did her slides a little bit earlier, but um, it is a uh, bit of a shock, it's a major shock that uh, probably will be uh, digested soon. But the um, news is twofold. I'm just looking and pulling up some um, news in here. But the uh, breaking news is that CZ from Binance announced that um, FTX called him and essentially just said uh, or communicated with them that they were having a liquidity crisis and so crisis so that's uh sending the markets lower it looks like we're bouncing a bit so things are you know being digested the markets don't like uncertainty and so but uh, the other news that came out is that uh lbry as you mentioned is just lost their case against the sec so i could actually uh, share my screen briefly and we can yeah that would be great through that together because I was doing other things. Thought it would be a pretty quiet day today, uh, and with the midterm results pending. And um, but this just came in and my screen started blowing up here. So let me go ahead and share my uh, screen. I'm not sure which screen it's sharing though. So I have to see here. That is not the one I wanted. All right, let me move this one over here. Sorry guys, have lots of screens over on my side. All right, you should be able to see that now. And um, so LBRY loses SEC case. This is less impactful to the overall markets there i had never heard of lbry but it's uh the news is it's you know the case calls the ruling a dangerous precedent for crypto so on the back of the xrp expectation uh, what if uh what if xrp loses we have to keep that in mind i mean the, the nothing's in stone and when you know consensus is dangerous so if everyone's expecting hey xrp is gonna win um be very careful with that and so if this and then the subheadline here is according to LBRY, the language in the court's ruling could make every cryptocurrency in the U.S. a security, including Ethereum. So that's kind of scary thought. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that. But uh, the bigger news here is this uh, FTX basically, ins I can't, I'm not going to say insolvent. We don't really know what happened. And the big question mark is what happens during due diligence? Because in a tweet from CZ, he basically said they have a non-binding LOI to uh, acquire um, FTX, but uh, depending DD here, right? And it says it right here, due diligence. So, um, you know, they had a good relationship before and they were early investors in FTX. So this is just a big, uh, big shock here. And here's the tweet from uh, Sam, a few announcements to make. Things have come full circle. FTX's first and last investors are the same. So uh, that's mostly Binance and a strategic transaction with Binance. So transaction is the key word. I didn't mean to click on that, but here's the uh, actual tweet. And so, you know, a transaction would imply that uh, they're going to be acquired, but I would imagine they'll keep it as a separate brand and just be owned by Binance. So I was just joking with a friend here a minute ago, uh, maybe uh, in 20 years in the future, CZ may uh, be the richest guy in the world if he uh, uh, acquires all of these crypto assets. But um, I don't know, Elon may have a huge enough head start. But this was done. So he has several bullet points. What we could do is... Um, uh, drop the tweet down in the uh, chat if anyone would like to see that. And there's several items he discusses, you know, clearing out backlogs. So all assets will be covered. And, um, you know, so the customers are protected. It's, unless there's another shoe to drop, you just really have to have a little bit, a healthy degree of skepticism. I won't say paranoia, but a healthy degree of uh, skepticism is always warranted in uh, crypto. But uh, it sounds like it'd be a good partnership. It's just not clear. It's uh, Some of the rumblings are that maybe things were not entirely done um, uh, above board. So we'll see. You know, let's say that for any reason, Binance says, no, uh, we're not going to do that. I, can't, I don't imagine that'll happen. But um, uh, here's a funny uh, meme, by the way, with uh, CZ uh, walking in. It's the edited Elon walking into Twitter with the kitchen sink <laughs> kind of a picture. But uh, anyway, guys, wanted to uh, give you the latest on that while we're talking about uh, FTX, uh, sorry, with XRP and just, just to be ready for anything. But uh, with that, um, but yeah, here even Richard Hart says uh, liquor and leverage. Smart man go broke, leverage kills. I think that he's implying that FTX just had too much leverage out there. And I'll end with that could explain the huge liquidations recently on the uh, 
uh, FTX exchange on FTT, and we were wondering why such big liquidations that we were seeing, and that would certainly uh, can explain that. So it's probably a little bit uh, high level for some of you, but I'll just show you visually. So crypto liquidations. Because we were watching this, that was sort of what caused the short squeeze uh, last week and the markets to push higher. So it um, these all may be related. And so we can ignore all this, ignore all this, and then I'll hand it back to you, Susie. But I wanted to hear. So these big red drops are liquidations and short liquidations. And um, so not sure what's going on here, but this is this is definitely not normal on this level of, of liquidations here. And now, and then today, of course, is this from today? Sometimes it's delayed. It was yesterday. So a lot of liquidations on the long side. So it seems they were selling this off maybe a little prematurely. I did see in the charts, and we'll get into that today, likely pullbacks on the daily, but the weeklies uh, hopefully still look solid and, and it could present a great buying opportunity to buy the dip here. So um, why don't we hand it back to you, Susie and Joe, and uh, we can sort of see what the charts are telling us. It's, um, you know, I was, I'm a big believer of the show me the charts and I'll tell you the news and was kind of wondering why things were pulling back this morning. Thought it was just midterm election jitters and uncertainty, but uh, now we know. Uh, so I'll, I'll give it back to you, Susie, if you want to. Take that is there back. any dollar, any dollar um, amount that they're talking? Because we did have a, a, a big seven-day fluctuation in the market, but no, uh, none of that's been released yet, uh, not to my knowledge. So, you know, that um, is going to take required due diligence. And so, sorry guys, I'm moving some things around to pull up some charts. But um, yeah, they they said pending due diligence. So basically, this was a uh, I don't want to call it a softball, but it sounds like. FTX got right down to the wire, and then today we're like, uh, "Hey, um, yeah, we're insolvent. Can you uh, can you buy us?" And um, so I don't think price is really a a discussion point at this point. I would imagine that's kind of per the tweet pending DD. Uh, DD stands for due diligence. Um, and what I might do here, though, which is relevant, just take a look at this because move that out of the way. This is the weekly chart. Of Bitcoin, you know, nice little push off the bottom with the ERI, and this is the weekly chart, but hitting this bull market support band. So while on the monthly we have a very nice bullish engulfing candle that I was looking at and um, outlining with some people here this week, this one, this one here, this month could could go sideways a bit. We just need to make sure it holds back above this. It doesn't go below this uh, 19,500 or close below it because then we've got uh, more downside. So the bull market support band here, important to, to break through. I, I did imagine we'd have some resistance here. So it's interesting timing. And, um, but, you know, I would, I would expect that it pushes up. And um, <laughs> my Chinese treadmill over there just starts talking to me randomly every now and then. Apparently it's connected to Wi-Fi. <laughs> so it's the strangest thing. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, well, that's all I had to share with you. And uh, we can, when I pass it back over to you, Susie. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Let me get the slides back. All right, one sec, guys. We're almost there. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's get back where we were. So we were looking at, oh, one second, guys. I just got to shrink this down. Yeah, right, so we're looking at Ripple. Ripple on the one week, one month performance chart it was looking it was going up. We're gonna look at the overall market. So on a seven day analysis, which is every week we come back to this one chart, and we were at one trillion last week, and now we're down to 968. So we had at least about a 30 billion dollar dip, and that's why I asked Brett earlier, like you know, what, where's the fiscal transformation? Um, so you know, I think that if that 
if that SEC um, lawsuit just happened. I don't know the date of that. That was just yesterday or today. So let's kind of see what that what you know what happens. Keep an eye on the market cap. So you see the overall market cap. I did just look at the heat map to see like biggest losers in the last hour, and I it didn't have FTX in there or library. So it'd be interesting to see how that news affects the market today. So keep an eye on that. All right. So we're at about 966 between 968 billion dollars of the market cap. But we've been here before. So I mean I don't think that um it's not a dramatic movement that we're not used to in a one week basis at this point. Here's the one week performance chart in the market cap in block size. So overall for the last seven days, we have things going down. The dark red, if you guys are new to the heat map, it means that it's gone down three steps in prices. And this is really good for my visual learners that need to see like colors and, and shapes. So each one of these block sizes is representing their market cap dominance. So at this point, you have the green, it's dark green, means that the prices went up three steps, but you see BNB, that's a medium green, and that went up 2.77%. So there's not any major players gaining at this point, but I did like to show you this, guys. This is a one-week top 50 gainers in the market cap in block size. So banned, if you happen to get banned seven days ago, then you would be sitting at 108 percent profit right now. I thought that was pretty exciting. And remember, this is in market cap block size still. So that means out of all of these top 50 gainers, Band has the largest market cap. Then you have PTS went up 184% in the last seven days. Cigna went up 94%. RVF, 91%. And Life went up 127%. So for a little positive in your life, there you go. So we're going to use the CryptoMastery.online indicators today. So if you want to subscribe, you can just go to that URL above. That's CryptoMastery.online. So this is Bitcoin USD, the one-week performance chart with the CryptoMastery indicators. So on a one-week basis, we're waiting for the early reversal for Bitcoin to come in. And that red line, the early reversal is going to be an arrow. You see the red arrow coming down? Well, that was in the past so we need a, a new one to show up saying that hey bitcoin is going to reverse and go in a more uh upward direction so the average true range that is that large red line from the left that goes all the way to the right in order for that to actually change direction bitcoin needs to surpass 27,608. if you look to the right hand side of your screen you could see that highlighted red line that red color number that's where Bitcoin needs to surpass to get to an actual average tree range in the upward trajectory and make that average tree range turn into green. So then you have the trend. So the trend, you can see it's sideways. It's, these candlesticks are not huge, they're tiny. You did have the key came in weeks ago, then the bell, the one, the two, the three. That's been consistent and consecutive, but you can see the candlesticks below them are very thin. So it, it's not a massive movement. And, and if you're looking at the price of Bitcoin, you can see it's been fluctuating in a, in a very tight range. Then the, the third indicator, to the, the other indicator, so it's the fourth indicator to the right, is the radar. That 60 stands for what Bitcoin is doing on the average of one hour. The 240 is for four hours. The D is for the day. And the W stands for the week. So on average, right now, Bitcoin is upward for the, well, at the time of taking the slide today, upward up for the hour, for the four hour, down for the day average, and up for the week average. And then you have the trend strength indicator, we call it the TSI. So these green arrows upward mean that the direction is an upward direction. So for the past four weeks, Bitcoin has been in the upward direction. And it's what's wonderful about this for a one week performance chart is that it's low on the chart for the trend strength indicator, meaning there's a lot of room for it to grow upward, right? It's just a little dangerous for me, I think, to, to purchase, like when you were on, it's a, say, look on the chart to November before the 2022, you see that TSI is in the top realm of this chart. That means it's in the overbought and that's a ceiling, it's saying, hey, we're in a ceiling. So what's wonderful about Bitcoin is we're not in a ceiling. So you have a lot of room to grow. Then you have the signal line. 
positive, what's great about the signal line right now is it's green, so it's moving in the upward direction, but it's tight. When I say tight, I mean it's close. When that gold line and that green line are close, it could switch. It's flippable at any time. It can go up or down. So I would say for a security situation, it's not super secure right now. I mean, it's close. Not as close as it was in the weeks before. Now you see a little space there, but not a lot of space. All right, the next indicator is the volatility index. This is beautiful for an acquisition situation. The volatility index is at a 6.86 in the oversold zone. So when I say it's on the floor, it's a really close to a floor. Zero is the absolute floor. 20 is the number where that thick red line is on the bottom area. 20 and below is considered oversold. So meaning you're buying when Ray Dalio would say, buy when there's blood in the streets. So of course, we want to buy when it's right at the upward trajectory, but if you don't have that luxury of watching the market at all times, and if you're more of a long-term trader, this is an indicator that you would really appreciate because sometimes you just want to just get in and you want to just have it, set it for an ultimate high trajectory and forget about it. And then one day you wake up, you're like, wow, well, I went to bed, Bitcoin spiked to 60,000 and it sold. <laughs> you say that was a great payday, right? I mean, that's a possibility too. So I think it's a matter of knowing your personality, your time frame, and, and what you can actually accomplish in a day, a week, a month, a year in your trading portfolio and what your your goals are. Okay, we're gonna jump into Ethereum now. And we can look at these live and definitely open up to Q&A in a little bit. So here's the Ethereum USD one week performance chart with the Crypto Master indicators. The top indicator, we have the average true range. So the arrow is pointing to that red line, that red little box that's still in the downward trajectory. It won't turn green until the price hits 2,207. So we're not there yet. Then you have the early reversal well, that came in. Remember, each candlestick represents one week. So there's four candlesticks here. The last two you can't even really see because it's literally so tiny. It's like a sideward, side, sideways city here, I say. Like there's there's like no upward or down. So four weeks ago, the upward trajectory happened. It looks like you could see the red candlestick. It did move up. It would be great to have a second early reversal come in. The next indicator down is the trend. So we can see that the trend is still in the green. You see the little line underneath those numbers. It's green, so it's moving up, but same thing, sideways city. It's tight, it's tight. It's not a big movement upward. Not exciting for me, at least, right? In a profit performance perspective. So you have the radar. It's showing it's that Ethereum on average for the 60 minute, which is one hour chart, it's moving up. On the four hour average, which is 240 minutes, it's moving up. Same as, as Bitcoin on this one. The day average is down, but the week is up. All right, so here's the trend strength indicator. This has got three consecutive weeks as I'm indicating that it's moving up. Similar to Bitcoin, it's wonderful that this trend strength indicator is in the lower zone on that particular chart because you still have room to grow, right? But it is in an upward direction. And this signal line, just like Bitcoin, it's in the moving up color zone. It's still in the green. You've got the gold line, but it's still not separated. Once the gold and the green line separate, then you know you have a longer, stronger, a stronger upward trajectory. Not there yet. Now, the volatility index is oversold at a level of 17.78. Bitcoin had a lower volatility, which is pretty exciting. But this is what you need to remember, 20 below is oversold. So you still have a lot of room to grow before you hit a ceiling. So these two, in my opinion, are in acquisition mode. It's just how low can it go? And then that's when it's something that I personally would scoop up. And personally, on a one week average, it's definitely on a floor. The closer to zero, the more on the floor it is, all right? But with the current news, you know, I think we all need to kind of be responsible and we need to do our own due diligence and look into that to see what will that outcome spike? You know, what's the media going to do with this and how far will it fly? And, you know, as far as the ripple announcements and that media and those outcomes, 
um, everything is, is going to in the court system, everything is legal. So it's a whole nother battle. You know, what people say with opinions don't matter in court system, okay? So it's whatever happens in the court, we really need to dive down into that fundamental stuff because that that could definitely sway the US investors, okay? So, you know, United States investors versus global investment situations, that's a totally different thing. And, you know, we are in a global market. so. It's not just the United States news we have to look at. We have to look at everything. All right. So in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So let's look at the hot movers in our basket. So at the time of taking the slide, just a little bit ago, Link was up 3.72%. Solana was up 1.52%. Cardano up 1.16 and Litecoin up 0.49. The other ones were going down. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, Harmony, Phantom, Atom, Polygon, and Algorand are having a little take profit moment. So let's look at the crypto screener now. So this was just taken with a trading view crypto screener and it's filtered by Coinbase and Binance US in an allocation of percentage changed in one day. So I thought this was pretty exciting because it's very consistent with the heat map we just looked at. Remember I showed you the top 50 earners in the last seven days and band was the biggest market cap and the um, of all of the what of the top 50s earned. So currently for the last day band continues to move up at 20.94%. So that's a chart that when we go live, we should check a look, take a look at. And if that's in your portfolio, that may be something that you want to potentially take some profit from. Um, we have uh, YFII, this is YEARN, or DFI money, United States, with the United States dollar, that's up 17%. And then you have Binance Coin up 14%. And then True up 8.74%. Aster up 7.54%. Ant is up 6.71%. AVT, Aventus, is up 6.59%. Alpine is up 6.51%. Porto is up 6.13%. GMT, also known as Stefan, is up 6.08%. And you have GTC, Gitcoin, up 5.58%. And notice on the right-hand side that you can see which ones of these are on Binance and which ones are on Coinbase, and that's Binance US. So Band is on both Binance and Coinbase. I just want to bring that to your attention. Then the BNB coin, that's going to be just on Binance. And then you have Aster and Ant. Those are on Binance. And then you have Alpine and Porto are on Binance. All right. And then we're going to review the, um, the indicators live. And so you can go to CryptoMastery.online if you want to scoop those up. So now it's time for Q&A and we will, ah, I, I was doing a quick search on coin, uh, coin market cap or the, the crypto, sorry guys, that was the heat map. Okay, so to start off today, we have Chainlink up and I wanted to show you on the crypto mastery basket kind of what's been going on with Chainlink. And Joe and anybody else that wants to, to chime in, please do. Definitely time for questions and answers if you guys have any questions. Kaya says, DD would tell how much bad debt FTX and Almada has. And Kaya said, let's see how the SEC spins the FTX Binance story. They don't pass opportunities like this. Good to know. Hey, Joe. Hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Okay. So, um, this is looking like one of those uh, weeks in crypto where really you want to be scaling out of positions. I'm just taking a look over here. One of the things is if you look at the Ethereum, Susie, I just wanted to just say something on this. All right. And uh, in this case point, uh, we have the signal line which just uh, finally just crossed over with this low today. And 
really, like if you draw a vertical line at the first green dot on the TSI, like right I mean, here, not green dot. I'm sorry, the red dot uh, to the left. Keep going. Oh, over here, or or. Well, this? right when it went to oversold, right there. Okay, and and this is just all in alignment with what we've been reviewing over the last uh, sixty days. When we're you know we're looking at setups of how to enter into the market. So if you look at like the uh, ERI, it looks like it was October twelfth. You see that ERI on the left. If you could put one of the arrows right there, okay. keep going to the left. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Like you want the this one right here? Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, really, um, you know, if you put me, give me another arrow, and I want that arrow to be on the TSI, on the on that green dot. Yes, right there. Right here. Yes. All right. And we just want to, I just wanted to just talk about um, entering into this trade, right? Uh, in alignment with what we've been discussing, where is that we're looking for the ERI to give us our early warning. And once we get our ERI, we can scale in. We check the other chart overlays. Um, in this case point, the volatility index was still oversold. There's still room to go. Um, so that's a great place where you can scale into your position. And in this case point, you notice the ATR, which actually came in, it looks like on the, uh, the 24th. So the ATR became a level for us. So it was a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about this ATR level and we needed to close above this to confirm the uptrend. And, and we got our initial move. Right? Okay, because if we look at the TSI, the, the TSI remained green. So that initial move was uh, great. And now, you know, it looks like that move may have exhausted itself. So I just, just reviewing over here what it looks like, uh, what how things are set up when is an optimal time to apply the strategy versus when is an optimal time to scale out of a position to take profit. And in this case point, right there, that trend indicator stopped showing green. And at that point, you know, that's one of your uh, uh, additional confirmation that the trend is over. You know, it, it, it was just it, it, while Joe was talking, guys, I did the count the little ruler here. So if you take it to where the ATR started and then to the highest point it ended at, uh, it was about 36%, something to that effect. So having been in the market, oh, there 26%. Having been into this market and experienced a hundred times and, and way more, it's just um, Joe. It's just like I know you're like really you've been doing stocks forever, but it's just so sad to see this market have such low rewards. Even though 26% in stocks is like really exciting <laughs> in crypto, I find it so silly and so so low that um. It's like a shame to have to get out of something like this, but that's, I guess, the art of swing trading. Personally, well, well look, if you're a long-term trader, yeah. you don't have to. You, you know, you, you know, you scale out. You know, and that's and that's why you always hear me say, scale in and scale out of your position. So you don't have to go completely flat. You know, if you're in it for the long term. But we're talking about optimal optimal positioning. Yeah. That's what I guess I'm trying to say. I think that's good. I think that's good for everybody to understand. It's like you got to know your personality and your stamina. I like that word in, in crypto. What's your stamina? Like, can this money sit and sizzle for a year? And what is the outcome? There's a lot of things happening. And I believe that personally, Ethereum on a fundamental basis, this is an infrastructure coin. It's going through a lot of transition right now. 
and you know maybe it's just the beginner like uh like you know some of those internet original social media sites they fizzled out like my face or something like that or my space so maybe this is one of those that will eventually fizzle and that's when you do have to scale out so the other thing is you can look at the day chart we can go to the week And on the wheat chart. I mean, it doesn't have to go all the way down and put a new low in, you know, but at the same time, it's not optimal, you know? Yeah, yeah, not for like, because you can, people, some people do take take their money weekly. They like get a weekly paycheck, right? So it's great, great, fine. What else do you want us to look at, Joe? Sorry. Didn't mean to <clears> sidetrack <throat> you, well, but it's. Just to be like a, a balance, uh, you're saying, yeah, it's for the intraday traders. An intraday trader or a weekly trader is scaling out. Yeah, you, you know, just for one, for one point I wanted to say on this is that when you're trading, you always have an ABO number. That means all bets are off. So, you know, if this market was to come back and put a new high in Susie, like it's right up there by the highs, that would be an ABO number. You know, I could be just totally wrong. And, you know, I mean, the market doesn't have to put a total new low in. It can just stay and consolidate. And then that the TSI will slowly pull back from that overbought zone. It's just when the market gets in this type of condition and you're seeing yeah. the red dots on the TSI, the main thing is, is stay away. You yeah. see what I mean? If there's yeah. danger, right, you know, stay away. Don't try to rush it. Let the market come to you. And, and there's there's been times in here where you've been seeing consistent setups, and then now there's a day like today, where I've been clicking through, and there's not too much I can find. A lot of these different cryptos is looking at their repositioning, you know, and according with you know it's also elections as well. Uh, now take a look at this one. I find this real interesting, right? And this is the Mana Ethereum. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I like about this. So this is our gaming land, our decentral land. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this is, is, is that the, uh, the last ERI was wrong. All right. So, that means that if this gives another ERI print, this next one could be right. So this is something in here coming into the week. Um, if you get an ERI print on this or you're in your trade notes, it's something in there that you want to take a look at. Now, what makes this interesting, Susie, is that the market price is drifting lower. But if you notice the TSI and the trend indicator started to go up. So this is sometimes like a clue that there could be a potential bottom in the works. For mana? Well, mana Ethereum. Yeah, Ethereum. Okay. And, and, what, and what we're looking for to say, hey, this could be a potential bottom is we're waiting for a new uh, ERI, okay? And then we're waiting in here for a new number print on the trend indicator because if you notice it gave the bell alert but then it gave two of these little inside bars on the trend indicator yeah and that's con that's consistent with a market which may have put in some type of bottom well you know it, you, you know. just basically showed us that a lot of people are going to get out of ethereum right now and so where are they going to go they're going to go into a metaverse that's what decentralized is. So it makes total oh. sense. Like if if they see Ethereum dropping and and with that one news article where it just showed us that Ethereum may be considered a security, if that could scare people off, then what are they gonna do? They're gonna go into Decentraland. Can Decentraland be coded as a security? It's a it's a metaverse, right? It's like totally different from oh, yeah. Ethereum um a fundamental 
What we do is we set our alerts, and that's a hypothesis, and we we wait for the tools to confirm that hypothesis, and that could be something extraordinary that you just stumbled across, Susie, just to let you know. Oh, because of the Ethereum, like collaborating all of the news with Ethereum? No. With what brought exactly. Exactly. Because, because that's what good trading is. Good trading is like being a detective. You got to get you got to get all these clues together. And then once you get all all the clues together, then you can find out who actually done it. Because you don't know. It it may be the butler, but it may not. I <laughs> love that. I used to play that when I was little. <laughs> love so basically just to give you some checks and checks and checks. I would say, you know, utilizing all of the the data that we have, volatility is in good place, signal line good, the trend strength is up, the trend is is sideways city, but it could change. And the positive thing I have to say about this is that we we at one point it was this these Keltner bands. You guys remember like the bottom, the middle, and the top, these are almost like stopping points, so like averages. And you could see the price right here went up and it challenged the second Keltner man, but down. The thickness of that candlestick means is this where most of that uh, most of that energy is staying. All that money is like staying within that clustered uh, monetization mon money level. Okay, that level. So it it challenged, but it didn't. It wasn't strong enough to go the thick candle all the way. So what I'm trying to say is there's room to grow. And then when we actually pass this right here, this top red average true range, that's when we go into the the green average true range in the upward trajectory for more of a longer term upswing. So this is like just that we're waiting and watching for ERI. That if we get that ERI simultaneously and if the price goes to this um Point zero 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 four five four one, then we're going to be better, we'll be in better shape. But it's a good, good find, Joe. So if you're looking to swap your Ethereum for something, there's a potential in in Mana, which is Decentraland. Then the other you know, good find. Well, it's just um, one of the other ones I wanted to go to, and this is another one, which is LSK Ethereum. And this is all along the lines of really we're looking for the another ERI print, right? But right now, to me, it's showing some type of clues of some type of potential bottom. And and uh, let me tell you why. Okay, the reason why is is that if you notice the TSI, like anytime you have a market price which is drifting lower, but the TSI is going higher so like if you notice on the chart you see in there how the price is red well we're red uh, showing that we're in the with the volatility index we're below the 20 but in addition to that the market price you know has been drifting lower so if you put a uh, if you look in there at the last eri which was the sell one right that right there was in conflict with the tsi so this right here is just something like mathematically that stuff that i look for that it could be a potential clue of a bottom and then what i'm going to be looking for it's a little bit different than what we've been doing the, the last couple of weeks but let's talk about what we have and then let's talk about um maybe what we're looking for to happen so what we're looking for to happen is, is we're waiting for the ERI to go green. We may get an ERI print. Okay, I'll make notes. Hmm. All right. And the second thing that we're looking for is we're looking for the trend indicator to give a key. 
And that can happen in one day. So we want to make sure we have our alert set for the bell alert. But we haven't got the key yet, so we'll be waiting for the key. And this is something that may go down uh, over the next couple of days, and then we'll have to just follow up, you know, the next, next week. I mean, that, that's what we'll do when we start seeing some of these. <clears throat> can I um, no. share a, a website after this? Can I share a website? Because uh, one of our followers, he said to go to um, one really cute website. I just want to share it briefly after we go through this chart. Sure. Keep going, Joe. Sorry, I didn't want to end. Sorry. To oh, okay. All right. So um, we're waiting for the key. And then now um, the TSI is already green. So you won't be waiting for that. Okay. And if you notice, Susie, you see how the signal line has already crossed? So if you, if you yeah. move that vertical line to the left. To the first. There you go. Well, I just wanted to just show in here the signal line is already crossed. So in this case point, you know, we already have a check on the volatility index. We have a check on the signal line and we have a check on the TSI. So out of the five chart overlays, we have three checks and we have two that we're waiting for. So if you could put a check uh, in that box on those three. There you go. So we're just waiting on this. So also that this red line right here will turn green too. And then yeah. know that the average true range isn't gonna just reminder guys, average true range won't change until you ha you passed that top average true range level. That's great. That's great. I just want to show you guys like real time what's happening on something. So one second, I'm just going to pull the, the, this. It's called crypto bubbles dot com. Bubbles. I'm sorry, it's bubbles dot net. Oh, no, guess not. Crypto bubbles dot net. One second. I'm so sorry, guys. Today is like so pop up party. Bubbles. I'm showing this because I wanted to show you for the news. Okay, so isn't this amazing, Joe? So I wanted to show you this FTT so that we could actually see what's up and down. So it's, it's similar to the heat map, but it's going to show you what's up and what's down. So, Joe, we could go into any of these markets. You want to look at Matic right now. Look, like that is for the week. I guess we could change it to the, the day. Oh, that's not good. Wow. All right. And then, <clears throat> yeah, go to the hour. Let's see how the hour is playing out. Wow, this is a pretty cool web page. Oh, I like it. So the only thing that's going up is TWT right now for the hour. So it's like watching a football game in action, but it's like a crypto game. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if there's any other time frame. Here's a five minute period. Oh, look at that. So if that's in market cap, I wonder if we could go and. Oh, it. it... Oh, interesting. I don't know what I just did. I just clicked on market cap plus week. So it so it looks like the most money, if you got Matic or Polygon in your portfolio, you know, before this turn, that's a good profit point. BNB is up 12 for the week. So five minute. Anything you want to look at, Joe? Um, All right, we'll go back. <clears throat> that thing is pretty interesting in there. Um, what is? You this? know, I don't. Uh, I don't see anything. I was just checking over here on, on the. Yeah, on the on the other charts I was just going through here. There's one coin here. Well, actually, there's probably two that we could probably talk about, and then we can maybe actually check it on the bubbles. Okay. All right. First. We have nine okay. minutes left. Okay. So the first one is APL BTC, and this is 
on KeyCoin. Because I know that we do have um, people that are on KeyCoin. And for, and for everyone on Coinbase, for right now, I, I didn't see anything in there. You just have to wait for the market to come about. Um, but I did see this for anyone that's on uh, KeyCoin, right? And this is along the lines with the setups that we've been doing in here. And this is one that looks uh, with the ERI. So um, what I wanted to point out first is, is that we had an ERI print the other day. Yeah, that's nice right here. So this is a one day chart, guys. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six days ago, the ERI triggered right here. Yeah, that's exactly correct. And the thing is, is that that's along the lines of what we're looking for to happen with the uh, MANA Ethereum, <clears throat> that type of uh, ERI print. Second is, is that you notice in here how we got the green dot on the TSI. That, that confirms in there when she's oversold that uh, that's an additional clue. So we could be scaling in on the ERI and then scaling in uh, with the TSI. And then finally, we got the signal line. Looks like the other day, Susie. And yeah, we just got sure. the key today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so people are trading their Bitcoin for Apollo. And the volatility index is at a 10.63. So it's got a lot of room to grow for that ceiling. Um, <clears throat> no, the, the thing is, is what we're looking for now is, is what we're really looking for is we're looking for that volatility index now to get above the 20. Uh, you know what ha may happen is that if this thing does turn and it gets above the twenty, it just may just explode because uh, you know you can see how it's right there at that middle culture band. So it's just like right on that resistance. So if this thing does break that, what I'd be looking for is that you see that high, Susie, from October. It's up at like forty-five. I think it can possibly go all the way back up and challenge that. That's nice. Right here, and but if we shrink it, I mean that that definitely has been accomplished multiple times. You can see it happen this back in September. Remember, this is a one-day chart, guys. So it's just a little bit. Wow, yeah. Went way above that in reality. I mean, in in like not too long ago. Well, if you notice, this one here is a, a pair. So this is another one. <clears throat> the pair is the Bitcoin. So what we uh, may see in there, as we see pressure on the major, you know, we may see in here this uh, volatility increase here on the pair. You know, we just have the only thing we can do is just set our alerts and position ourselves, and um, and when our alerts, you know, trigger, take profits because you got to be quick in here. Like that's one thing in here when it comes to anything that's on these pairs. When it comes right. to the exit, the the exit is tough because you you can't sit there and stare at the screen and, and try to be, you know, think that uh, you're gonna know exactly when is the best time to get out. Like. You know, you need to really set your alerts. That's what I do. And then when the alerts trigger, manage the alerts, you know, and then that way there, you, you know that, uh, you know, you're reacting at, at, a, at the optimal time. With this being said, it's almost like if you're just going to bounce between Bitcoin and Apollo and Ethereum and MANA, then you're going to go back and you're going to sell your Apollo to get back into Bitcoin. So it's a simultaneous situation where you're going to want to be watching the Bitcoin price too. And when Bitcoin is in the downward spiral, then you just jump into Apollo. And then when Bitcoin is moving up, so basically opposites attract. So it, are these or could these potentially be a polar opposite of each other? It's flow. And that's typically what people are going to be doing when they're doing pairs. Is that correct, Joe? Yes. Uh, and you just have to be quick on the exit. I mean, you know, it, it's just, um, I, I just say that because even with all my experience that I have, when it comes to these pairs, a lot of times I'm still late. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, if it goes up there and, and it may, it just it so happens that I may just be in the car or it's just in that little window where I may be asleep and, and the price spikes so quick up there at such an odd time that, um, uh, you know, I have to have, I have my alert set and then I always have it in the back of my mind, uh, you know, when that's going to happen because there's been so many times that I've, I've gotten into trades and, um, I end up giving back a lot of profit and it's not because I'm, I'm not a good trader. It's because I, I, I just, I just don't know when the movement's going to happen, you know? And, and so I set the alerts and stuff and, and I hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to start somewhere. So I just want to, if you guys have YFII, I, I want you to know it went up 64% in the last 19 days. So this could be a good point in time for profit. And I want to just notate, look how long it's been in the overbought zone. That's phenomenal. So um, this may be something you want to, you know, definitely look through your portfolio. <laughs> Sometimes you just buy a bunch of stuff because you get all these like, oh, suggestions, buy this, buy that. But since October 1st to today, November 8th, it looks like it had some really good movement in the market. So I want to put that in there. Now, early reversal came in, which makes sense. You are way beyond the the top Kelton band. That's, that's a big move, right? So, um, great time to take profit and remember you can go to that crypto screener and you can just decipher it by exchanges and then the percentage change you can kind of see what's moving up like look at that binance coin so if something is moving down you know if people are getting out of ftx and if the market cap has not just crashed which it's it seems to be it's a normal fluctuation in the last this this fluctuation of these billions of dollars and billions it seems normal now because we've been watching it for the last year or so and it's consistently within those ranges but look at this one 42 percent in 13 days people are switching from bitcoin to bnb and let's see here's band usd this one is coinbase so they're taking their USD and putting it in demand. And that definitely switched. So we were waiting for this to actually go past the average true range and it way surpassed that. Look at that big movement. So if you've got band, you know, I think at one point Coinbase even gave you free band if you take their little test. That went up 213% in three days. Holy macaroni. <laughs> Hope you guys got some band in there. Let's see if anybody's putting questions in. So thanks, Chaos, for the bubbles. Oh, that was the last thing. Um, Chaos said, just so you guys know, I wish he would ever talk to us. He says that many coins turning blood red, extreme sell-off, while Binance is super bright green. Nice. Yeah. So let's see where the crypto screener is with that. Yeah, there's that Binance that he said, Binance light green. So people are having confidence in Binance. And look at that. So 41% in 12 days, BNB went up. So people are getting yeah. rid of look at, Yeah. Yeah, good point. And you know, I, I just, and you know, I just want to just say on that note, right, right there is that, um, I'm glad you pointed that out because, you know, I, I'm more active in my Binance account than I am in my Coinbase account. And it's ironic that you can't trade this Coinbase, I mean, this Binance coin on the Coinbase. So, yeah, you know, a lot of times it just seems like when, when Coinbase is liquidating, there may be a lot of coins or a majority of the coins that are going down. And in the midst of that storm, you know, this Binance coin seems to prevail, you know, and it's become this triumphant. Yeah, you get a discount yeah. when you're buying and selling if you're if you're using Binance coin for your fees. And so it's almost like buying gas, right? It's like 
you have to have gas in order to keep it going and growing. So, wow, look at this. On a one-week basis, this has continued to be in the upward average true range since February of 2021. Back some stamina and some longevity. And right now, it's way above the average curve. So, Bitcoin is definitely being transformed into BNB. This is one of those things where even though BNB is not a stable coin, it seems to be that people are feeling more stable or safe putting it in BNB than putting it in USDC. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you can look at those. Those. Let's look back at the crypto bubbles. And let's say, um, let's look at the month. BNB up 26%. Bid. I wish they had the, they, you know what I don't see, guys? I don't see the stable coin in market cap because they you know they don't fluctuate. So they're not representing that here. And let's just go back to look at the five minute period. Let's look at that FTT that's going super down. And we have to, um, if it's uh, okay. one o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. We we gotta go. All right. Here's FTT. Here's the one week. So let's look at the one day. So you can see. Whoa. All right. I'm gonna we're gonna jump off. Everybody, check your portfolio for FTT. All right. Looks like another Luna. All right. Good luck trading, everyone. And let's yeah. uh, uh, set your alerts for the Mana uh, Ethereum to see if that moves forward. That might be one of the best uh, plays. Um, um, on the board. All right, trading. if you got okay. profit, and thanks to Joe, take profit. All right, have a good day, guys.